It's Thursday, August 18th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, show number 697. Geek News Central is sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com, the world's largest domain register and web hosting provider, and also by GoToMeeting. Now with HD Faces, the world's best web conferencing solution, get your free trial at GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. Also in part by Carbonite. Get a 15-day free, 15 free trial. Use promo code TPN and get two months free with purchase. See details at geeknewcentral.com. Hey, everyone, got a great show lined up for you tonight. You know what comes next? Got a good one. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. Where go, Fly? Microphone. Where go, Fly? Video feed. Go! Web browser. Go! RSS data stream aggregator. Go, Fly! Interflux totism suppressor. All right, I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Bucky, Bucky, who's got the button? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody, hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast, coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio overlooking Greater Honolulu. Everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Todd Cochran, and of course, I want to encourage you to get over to geeknewscentral.com. Check out all the great content over there at the website. Of course, check out our archive podcast with an S, plural. We've got lots of great shows over there for you to check out. We definitely want you to uh, get involved and see all the great content that we produce on a weekly basis. I think we're putting up about six hours of content a week for you right now. We've got the Gadget Professor that comes out every uh, Thursday. Of course, a new edition of that was released today, so that's up on the website. And, of course, Saturday we'll have our Saturday morning tech show, followed by Sunday the Chrome show. And then every Monday and Thursday I record this show and then uh, release it Tuesday and Friday morning. So we, lots of content to be subscribed to. All, and all you got to really do is get over to the website. Oop, let's, let's try a different uh, button here. All you got to do is try to get, get over to the website at geekingcentral.com, and you'll see that orange box there in the second column. That will... Basically, have all the links to all of the ways you can subscribe to the show. Of course, you if you're looking for a specific uh, version of it, whether you know audio or the mobile version or, or the high def version, all you got to do is really kind of click on that link. It'll take you into deeper. You'll be able to look at the show notes and get uh, and get subscribed. Of course, we want to give a warm welcome to the Johanna, all the longtime listeners of the show. We want to thank you for being here and being part of the family. Of course, we want to encourage you to send feedback to the show at Geek News on Twitter. Of course, you can always email me here at the show at geeknews at gmail.com, or you can call the voicemail hotline at 619-342-7365. Well, I tell you, got a lot, lot happening, and uh, I had a fun thing last night that I did. We'll talk about that in a second here. But uh, as a reminder, the show is available uh, via Roku, Poxy, Samsung IPTV, it's available on Google TV. Some of you have had a little bit of trouble finding the show on Google TV. And the, their podcast directory and that thing simply sucks. And I don't know where they're getting their source data for it. So all you got to really do is add it as a shortcut or as a favorite and uh, load it up. You can watch the show right there on your big screen on that device as, as well. Of course, we're streaming tonight at live.geeknewcentral.com. And we're also going to have the show simulcast on Ustream at the same time. So we're on both those net, basically both those sites. And, of course, we'll do a replay mode over at uh, live.techpodcast.com in a more prime time hour when people are awake. So, um, well, let's just talk here for just a second. Um, um, hope you guys like the, uh, the, uh, the new version of the video of the, of the show made a major change to uh, the encoding on the last show. Got a lot of immediate feedback from the from the audience, basically saying, yep, much better. Um, even though it wasn't in a, in a high-def mode, uh, everyone was pretty pleased with the quality and uh, download and watchability of that. So we'll uh, probably continue to do that until we get any alternate feedback. Also made the big move. Uh, Geek News Central is now running on brand new hardware, and boy, I tell you, the the site, the back end, is is simply smoking. Um, the site is just uh, 
We even turned off WP caching because we were having trouble with it initially. It was uh, showing content on the front of the website that was from back in July. And uh, as soon as we turned it off, things cleared up and everything on the site is uh, is clean and we're up and running. And I, I, I don't think we've got any other issues. Had a few small things with some DNS propagation on uh, some folks over in the UK and so forth. But other than that, the new site is up and you should see fresh content at GNC if you don't. Definitely uh, refresh your cache. Uh, basically, uh, make sure you've closed your browser at least once uh, before you're coming back to the site, and you'll be able to get on to the, uh, the new super-powered uh, server that we're running on. And, of course, speaking of servers and speaking of uh, domain and hosting services, I want to talk about GoDaddy for just a second. You know, GoDaddy has been a longtime sponsor here at the show, and the Geek News Central runs on a supercharged GoDaddy server that I pay for. But I do that through your guys' support of the sponsor here at GoDaddy, here at Geek News Central here at GoDaddy. Yeah, I wish I was there at GoDaddy. Um, but I uh, got a great way for you to make some money starting today. And, and you know, I'm, you know, I, you guys help me make money by supporting the sponsor, but I'm going to help you make some money as well. Have you, think of, have you thought of starting your own online business? And uh, what I have for you is a pretty unique offer here by, by becoming a GoDaddy domain reseller. And uh, while I don't personally have a reseller account, it's uh, basically a conflict of interest. I know a number of folks do. And actually, I got some emails from, from some of you uh, that have went through the process here over the past week and have started their own uh, reseller accounts. I've actually asked them to link to uh, those accounts as soon as they get them up and, uh, and, it, and so I can basically show them off to all of you. But if you'd like to save 30% on a GoDaddy domain reseller account, all you have to do is pick your plan and use my promo code by using the promo code GEEK30. By clicking on the link or the banner, you go over there and it will automatically preset it for you. You can pick a basic reseller plan at $8.99 a month all the way up to a super reseller account at $16.99. And this is a great way for you to uh, basically sell your own dot-coms. And, you know, this is this is pretty cool. There's really no, no deposits required, advances. There's revenue sharing. Your, 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 your storefront can be live in minutes. There's 24-7 product support, so you don't have to do the product support uh, for this. Um, automated billing and renewals for over 50 different products, and it's a turnkey website including a cart and credit card processing. There's even marketing tools. You can use um, Google, Microsoft Bing, Yahoo Search, and Facebook um, ad credits that they give you uh, with the account. When you sign up for a super reseller account, they actually give you $125 in Google AdWords, $100 in Bing slash Yahoo credit, $50 in Facebook advertising credit, bonus software of $680 value, and, of course, 24-7, uh, 365 support for your customers. So this is a great way to get involved uh, with GoDaddy and, and basically start making your own money from the world's largest register and have your own storefront. If you're not be want to becoming a reseller and you want to do your own thing, just get your own domain name or get your own hosting account. Get over to geeknewcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. There will be a link there to all of my great promo codes. The promo codes will have can be used for almost every occasion, whether it be a SSL certificate, whether it be a hosting account, whether it just be trying to save some money on renewals and so forth. We've got it for you, and we want to thank GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here at Geek News Central. So use those codes. Use those promo codes. Save lots of money. Share them with your friends. Link to it. Blog to it. We appreciate it, and thanks for Gladiator for being here. All right, let's talk about what, uh, what's what been going on. Um, essentially, I had told you on the last show that I was getting ready to go in for another a sleep study, and this time was on the machine. And if, you're, if those of you are watching a video, you can actually see right here on the bridge, well, the upper part of my nose, there's a little bit of a tender spot. The guy had, like, when he wrenched this mask on me, and it's basically what it does is it, it's kind of a weird deal. And it, it, and you you look at this thing, you're like, whoa. And and I, it really wasn't what I was expecting. But as you guys know, I've uh, talked to you already about having sleep apnea. And they put this thing over your nose. It's connected to a, a tube that's forcing air. And it's like pretty high pressure. It was much higher pressure than I thought. And, uh, but he made it so tight that when my mouth was closed, obviously they didn't want to blow by around the mask, but I got a little bit of a sore spot up there. So 
that's one of the complaints I've heard about people that have been on these machines before. They say, yeah, you end up with this like triangle on your face. And I normally probably, I almost know that I always sleep, fall asleep and I have my mouth open. But if you open your mouth with this thing hooked up, <laughs> air blows out of your mouth. I mean, it's just like, it's, it's really odd. Now, when I first put it, when he first put it on, I was like, are you sure it's supposed to be that much pressure? And it, it, it's really, you can tell that it's a positive air pressure thing and you understand the whole, uh, the whole mechanism behind it once you're on it. But, uh, about 10 last night, I said, okay, let's go ahead, uh, turn off the lights, uh, turn off the TV and let's see where we go. Woke up at six o'clock this morning, slept eight hours on the machine. Apparently, different times at the night, he'd come in and adjusted to flow a little bit, but I did sleep for a full eight hours. Now, I would normally be able to sleep a full eight hours if I wanted to, um, and I don't really know if I feel more rested, but uh, he wouldn't tell me too much because he was a technician, so I have to wait four or five days for the final report, but um, first night on the machine, not bad. Um, just hope that uh, it was just, I'm not going to end up with a, an owie here every time I'm using this thing because it does. I'll have no skin left before it's all over. But I don't have the machine here at home yet. We're going to wait for that. I'll uh, probably get to follow up with the doc after I get back from uh, from Albuquerque. Well, this coming Saturday morning, we're going to do a Saturday morning tech. We'll have that uh, starting, of course, at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern. And um, basically, if shortly after that, I have to get out of here and get on an airplane and hel- head to Albuquerque. I'll be there all next week. We're going to have a, 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 a listener meetup. I've already gotten a few emails from folks saying, hey, yeah, I want to come out and, and do dinner. Several of you already said, nope, I don't care which night. So uh, unless I'm going to get any more feedback. Sam, haven't heard from you. So if you're going to be coming out, uh, if you've got a preference, let me know. And then I'll kind of make a decision uh, decision from there. So um, anyway, that's uh, going to be happening next week. And, of course, we'll have show number 700 uh, the Monday after I get back from uh, Albuquerque. We'll have show 698 and 699 um, in Albuquerque. But uh, if you want to donate something for show number 700, definitely drop me an email here at the show at geeknews at gmail.com, and we'll take your donations and make them available. I've got some stuff back here already that's kind of getting piled up, so we're going to have some cool stuff to give away on show 700. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to be able to do something special for the show. Um, Maybe do something more live a little earlier in the day, uh, potentially, so that more people can uh, participate. I'm just kind of going to look at my schedule. Mondays are never good for me. I'm usually pretty slam. But uh, we'll have something. We're going to give a lot of prizes away. So look forward to uh, show number 700. Samples for the Plank Owner Program have not showed up yet, so I really don't have nothing to report on that. So we'll keep you advised on this. Also, I want to remind you, if you're attending a conference, be our eyes and ears. We want you to be our, our feet on the ground and uh, be more than happy to help cover some of your costs when you couldn't have been if you want to write a few articles for for GNC. I guess that's it. Before we get into the content here, let me take care of one more piece of business, and then we'll, we'll bump right into uh, the content tonight. I already talked quite a little bit here about stuff. Got a stack of stuff for you for sure. But uh, first thing I want to talk about, of course, is my good friends at Carbonite. And their new sponsor been here uh, sponsoring the show now for just about a month. But uh, Carbonite Online Backup really protects really anything that you have of value on your computer, whether it be a document, a picture, a PDF file, a banking records, Excel spreadsheets, you name it. So when you have that crash, it's going to happen to you at some point somewhere down the road. Uh, whether it be by be a virus, a theft, um, whatever it may be, Carbonite makes it easy to get your data back to, back onto the machine. And uh, you can back up with Carbonite with just a few clicks. Carbonite has helped restore over 7 billion computer files that otherwise may have been lost forever. With Carbonite, you can access your backed up files privately from any computer in your smartphone, iPad, with a free app. And, of course, unlimited backup for your PC or Mac with any time, anywhere access is only $59 a year. That's less than $5 a month. I'm actually looking here at uh, my Info Center. I'm going to bring it up and see what uh, Info Center says tonight on my backup. And uh, it uh, talks about uh, where 
Yep, just it's you know, give me a little report on what it has done in the past uh, 24 hours. So all my stuff is backed up. 135 gigs is uh, in the cloud, safe and sound. But you can get a free 15-day trial at Carbonite, no credit card required. Use the offer code TPN, and you'll get two months free if you decide to buy. And that's Carbonite.com, and the offer code for two free months is TPN. I can't stress enough. You guys going over there and get a trial, trying this thing out. Once you have it installed, it's set it and forget it. That's the best part. That's the best part about this program. You don't even have to. I mean, it's like, did I back stuff up? Did I did I turn that uh, batch file? You know, you don't even have to worry. It's done, and it's there, and uh, absolute peace of mind for sure. Okay. Let me go ahead here and get into the content tonight. We've got a stack of stuff for you. And uh, let me roll down here to the first article. And I, if I had, what I really need to do is get wired up for some sound effects. <laughs> you know, I've, I've, I've thought about doing that before. Do any of you want to help me find some cool fireworks? What we need is a, um, basically a, some sort of a, we need an air raid siren, I guess, or some sort of a where it's like a major alert, 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 alert. One of those types of uh, um, sirens because the very first article here, even though we had huge news today about HP and a bunch of other stuff going on, I want to really start right off and talk to our listeners up in Canada. And you all need to be up and abreast of what is going on because, oh, my goodness. Um, you know. We've heard about the the uh, riots that happened in UK, and largely uh, people are saying that is because you know that's turning kind of UK is turning into a little bit of a police state with uh, folks getting shaken down and all the time and cameras and you know basically you can't make a move there without uh, um, coming under some sort of scrutinization, but Canada has took the most votes, who took the most votes in the May 2011 federal election, have put together a security crime bill that is pretty appalling. It's called Bill C-52. And C-52, you need to, I mean, you guys need to get on the phone or do whatever action you can here to get this thing shut down. But C-52 requires all, and I repeat, all telecommunication companies to provide law enforcement any information in the service provider's possession or control respecting the name, address, telephone number, and electronic mail address of any subscriber to any of the service provider's telecommunication services and internet protocol address, mobile identification number, electronic serial number, local service provider identifier, international mobile equipment identifier, international mobile subscriber identity number, and the subscriber identity module card, in other words, SIM num SIM card that are associated with the subscriber's service and equipment. Now, here's the crazy part. To get that information, law enforcement will not need a warrant. Each governmental agency can designate up to 5% of its total employees as, an author as authorized to request information on demand. And then it can ban any telco from admitting that they provided any such information. Whoa. So even the privacy commissioner is pretty upset about this bill. Privacy commissioner Jennifer Stoddart sent a letter to the Public Safety Canada in which she and other provincial privacy officials said the bill would give authorities access to a wide scope of personal information without a warrant. For example, unlisted numbers, email accounts, data and IP addresses. The government itself took the view that this information was sensitive enough to make trafficking and such identity information a criminal offense. In other words, if you have this information of someone else's, but law enforcement will have access to this if C-52 is moved forward. And this is over the first piece of what they're calling the omnibus, the omnibus security crime bill. And uh, 
uh, this is, you know, we've we've got this warrantless uh, wiretapping and all that stuff here, but it's just one more thing. I'm telling you, folks, little by little, they're digging in. You know, here we had this uh, um, mobile service shut down on the BART in San Francisco. Okay, turned off the mobile service. Does that sound like uh, Libya? Or does that sound like Egypt where they shut down stuff? Do we, li do we live in a society where they can just shut the Internet off or shut mobile services off? Obviously, you know, in the U.K., this whole thing going on with those riots that happened, you know, the students were using their mobile phones to figure out how to avoid the police and a variety of other things. And that's why the government wants access to the 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 uh, the uh, BlackBerry mobile network and so forth, and wants information from Google. You, know, you, you expect to hear about this stuff happening in Iran, in China. You don't expect to hear about this kind of stuff happening in the United States, Canada, and the UK. But here it is, and and just you know, as you guys tell me, are you guys not worried? Are you guys not, like, going, holy crap, what is going on? You know, I think the I think we all were, you know, after 9-11, there was a little bit of an understanding with this country when they put the Patriot Act in on why they did that. And I think for the majority of us, you know, we probably have nothing to worry about, but we, in ongoing, and someone's trying to call me now, a blocked call. That's interesting. So if you're trying to call me right now, don't call me and be, and be blocked at, uh, what time is it? 8.31 in the evening, Honolulu time. So it's just a, it's a curious, uh, curious move here. And with legislation going in place here in, in Canada, um, it, it's, it, it's, it's gotta be a little bit worrying. And, um, I think we all have to sit back and kind of, Go, hmm, and see where this goes. But love to hear you guys' feedback on this. Twitter me at, at Geek News, or you can, of course, email me straight here at the show at geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline is available, 619-342-7365. And uh, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you, whoever's trying to call me right now. <laughs> we're live. It's, we're not, I'm not going to answer the phone. Leave, leave a message. All right, let's talk about, uh, let's move off that topic. Let's talk about HP. HP has confirmed that they are going to buy Autonomy. And it's a British enterprise software company for $10.2 billion. And at the same time, uh, they've uh, made some uh, announcements during the earnings call today that essentially uh, means that they may be walking away from their uh, PC business. And definitely WebOS is in trouble, but uh, it appears here that HP is going to follow uh, IBM in ditching its PC business, and that uh, especially their tablets. And there was a, a all hands call at HP today that brought the WebOS team together and, and said, "We're not abandoning WebOS, but we are definitely going to make some changes. And some of you are going to lose your jobs. And if you're a valuable player and you have something, in other words." A bunch of people at HP better get ready to look for uh, a new line of work. But this was covered everywhere today. And uh, so we'll see what happens with uh, with HP as they move down the road here with this new plan. But uh, they definitely got their butt kicked over this tablet. You know, here's the interesting thing. I keep getting um, emails from PR people. They were saying, Todd, we want you to review this. We want you to review that. And I'm like, hey, I don't have an HP tablet. Uh, you want me to review that? I'm, you know, it's on my list, but, you know, I haven't went out and bought one to do the reviews you wanted me to do. And I got like dozens of emails and, and, uh, and I kept being told, oh, we'll send you a tablet. We'll send you a tablet. We'll send you a tablet. They never sent one. So we didn't cover it here on the show at all. But uh, it does uh, beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> that their PR efforts kind of failed. Um, they gave every, you know, they sent one to everyone else. 
I guess someone knew that this announcement was coming, but uh, um, it'll be surprising. You just watch in the next week or so, a tablet will show up from from HP. <laughs> um, you know, a little bit late. So uh, just package it back up and send it back to them. But uh, yeah, the touchpad and its web OS powered smartphones are in trouble, you know, and part of the problem is is they lock themselves into the Qualcomm chipset, and they've admitted during their uh, discussion today that they're going to need to um, have some additional, you know, chipsets that this needs to work on. So we'll see if that what ends up being the case, but how many of you now are left with a piece of gear that has been discontinued? And, of course, there was a room on the street that Best Buy had piles of these things and are demanding that uh, HP take them back. But how many of you in the uh, part of the audience have uh, purchased a, um, have a touchpad at home and you're thinking to yourself, boy, did I make the right choice there or not? But um, anyway, enough on HP. We'll move on here. There's a great uh, series of videos on allthingsd.com. And uh, this is a series of interviews from from Reed Hoffman. Of course, he's one of Silicon Valley's best-known entrepreneurs and investors. And uh, boy, oh boy, I tell you, you get uh, funded by him, uh, you, you've hit the big time. But uh, there was an interview done in his offices at uh, in Sand Hill Road and where he talks about uh, his investment theories talks about his uh, Greylock Seed Discovery Fund for seed investments, and he also gives uh, uh, five free five tips for success for en- uh, entrepreneurs. So a pretty good little series here. I have the link up in the show notes for you to, uh, to check out, okay? How many of you have been in an airport or in a mall or one of those places where you see one of those charging stations? Uh, I've seen them all over the place, and uh, I think I've used a couple at at different events. I know I used one at CES and some other places, but next time I get ready to go somewhere, I'm going to really think twice about using one of those kiosks. Just imagine being out and about and uh, seeing one of these stations. You need a little power-up. And you plug your device into the uh, the power station, and that power station, instead of just hit providing power, is also connected to something more rogue, like a computer that's waiting for you to connect. And it starts pulling data down off your mobile device, and or sending data to your mobile device. You unknowns to you. At uh, the hacker conference. They uh, installed a charging station, and, uh, of course, everyone there is supposed to be pretty aware that they probably should not be attaching any of their devices to anything that they don't own or haven't had in their positive control the entire time. But over 360 people um, did grab and plug into this power station, and luckily it was uh, had been configured by some folks that were just sending out a... Uh, and they they were um they were just basically doing an awareness campaign and as soon as they plugged in the change the sign on the uh the signage um on the charging station changed from cell phone charging kiosk to a red uh a red placard that said you should not trust public kiosk with your smartphone and um uh, it basically uh kind of a little bit of a warning that uh you know, the information could be retrieved or downloaded without your consent. And they said, luckily, at this particular station, they take in the ethical route and your data is safe. Enjoy the free charge. But uh, even at DEF CON, that would have a uh, little bit uh, concerned me. And I think that um, all of us should really think about it, especially dependent upon what that phone has in it. If you're a government employee, if you work for a company where you've got private data on the phone that could cause harm if that data was uh, accessed and downloaded, uh, contact information, uh, documents, and so forth. So be uh, be aware of this. But this was on krebonsecurity.com. have a link in the show notes, of course. Of course, it'll be in the newsletter for those of you that are signed up for the newsletter upon uh, 
uh, finalization of the show tonight. You know, one thing, having just finished uh, my bachelor's degree in professional aeronautics uh, from when I started when I was still active duty in the Navy, one thing I really, really got a um, sense of was the price of textbooks. And I think the most money I spent for a single textbook was about $300. It was a textbook and had uh, training materials with it. So maybe it was higher, but they're saying now that the average student, and I don't believe this is this low of a number, they're saying that the average student spends about $1,000 on textbooks each year. That's 26% or, excuse me, or 26% of their yearly tuition. Now, uh, only only $5,000, $4,000 for yearly tuition? At what school? <laughs> and what degree plan? I think that gets you through a four thousand dollars. That doesn't get you through a quarter. <laughs> it doesn't get you through a through a whole year. I don't know where they're going. Where this where these guys got their information on going to school. But anyway, um, it's turning out now that a lot of books are showing up on peer to peer sites. Uh, there's a site to specifically Library Pirate. Um, was founded a little over a year ago with the site mission of providing college students with an alternative to the continuously rising textbook pri uh, prices. Now, here's something that I really kind of figured out. Now, those of you that haven't been in school for a while, a lot of you that are listening to the show have kids that may be coming up to that age, and you probably have done some investigation, or maybe you've had kids gone through. But what I found was when you get your class curriculum, they'll say, okay, you need such and such book, such and such edition. So let's say it's edition seven. Well, or edition 12, or edition 13, or edition 21. I had some books that had as high as edition as like edition 27. So you're thinking to yourself, how much really change from edition 26 to edition 27? And usually, not very much. Sometimes the homework questions changed. But what I did was, um, for some of my classes, I went out and purchased a used book at the previous edition. And um, that seemed to be, seemed to work out most of the time. It basically, I got lucky and didn't get affected because, you know, people when they update books, they don't really update them that much. Um, and, and what I would tell the professor was, is, hey, by the way, uh, I, I knew the class. I, did, I didn't realize the class required edition uh, 16, and I got an edition 15 book. And uh, um, if the questions are different, I'll provide the, the answers or provide the questions that are on the, uh, in the text. And then usually the professors didn't have, um, didn't have an issue with it. So that saved me a lot of money um, when, when I was taking classes. But... Um, it is kind of cool that they're starting to make these uh, textbooks available via peer to peer. Now, if you if you are facing a book that's completely changed, and obviously you got to get the newest one, but um, it might be kind of cool to be able to get a book digitally that just has the new questions in it, and get the older version on peer to peer to cover the material just as well. Um, We'll see. We'll see how this works out. But uh, with the cost of books, I think this site's going to be uh, uh, very, very popular. And uh, I don't know how much stuff is out there. You know, scanning a college book is pretty tough. <laughs> and they usually don't come in digital format. Some of the McGraw-Hill books do. Um, but I think all of those had a online component. You couldn't get a PDF version of them. You actually had to go online and get access to it. Some people are actually able to get access via a digital version that's got DRM, too. But that goes into the next topic about college one-stop shop. Chegg has, buy, has purchased a web tutoring service. So online textbook rental education service Chegg Incorporated has acquired web tutoring service Student of Fortune for cash and company stock as a startup brought in its business to try to become a one-stop for college students. I'm not at all familiar with Chegg. But this may be another source for cheaper books for parents and for uh, college students that are getting ready to uh, hit the campuses here in a few days. But I know that the University of Hawaii starts on Monday, 
and uh, probably a lot of students have already gotten their books, but it may be a uh, um, an option for the, the follow-on quarter. So I'll link up this in the show notes. That was an article that was over on the Wall Street Journal. Now, AT&T, boy, oh, boy, you have really torqued me off today because it appears that AT&T is so worried about their messaging system, but about SMS, that they are now going to reduce their messaging plans to one. <laughs> so specifically, AT&T is removing the cheaper $10 a month option, which gives users 1,000 text messages. And all that remains is the $20 a month unlimited option, if you don't get the unlimited option, spend the 20 bucks. You can have a new, a, a new no preset plan and pay 20 to 30 cents for each message. You know, this is what merger is all about. Merger makes choices. AT&T acquiring T-Mobile and having more choices and data plans and stuff, right? And you're going to have lots of more options with this new merger. And now, you know, you, just an evidence of what the merger is going to bring us is what AT&T has announced today. And, uh, you know, they're going to uh, make it much more uh, easy for you to choose your plan. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm feeling a little sarcastic here and, and sounding a little sarcastic, but AT&T knows that most people are not going to pick the no SMS plan. They know that. They're not going to do that. They're not stupid. But at the same time, my wife does not need a $20 a month unlimited plan. And in fact, I probably can get away with not having a plan at all and just pay the stupid $0.20 cents for each message. AT&T is obviously worried about what's going on in the SMS space, but luckily, well, there may be some options here soon. Startups like GroupMe, which allow users to bypass SMS and, send, and use data to send short messages, are gaining popularity. And then we also have uh, Google and Facebook have introduced some solutions that also allow you to bypass SMS. And of course, Apple is about ready to release iOS 5 with the new iMessage service. So, um, you know, maybe we'll all be doing workarounds. It's been a cash cow for AT&T. They've made millions and probably billion, well, billions of dollars on messaging. Verizon just pulled a fast one, too, on, uh, oh, hey, we're going to give you, a, those of you that have a data plan, uh, we're going to give you this, or don't have a data plan, we're going to give you this extra little option. If you want to spend $10, we'll give you 200 megs of uh, data a month. Do you realize that today I can go over to Amazon and I can buy, for to move one gig, one gig of traffic on Amazon, on their commercial services, I can move it for 15 cents. I can move a gig. Um, this week's or, or yesterday's, uh, not yesterday, Monday's video um, has already moved about two terabytes of traffic since I put that video up. Now, you can just do the math on that. That was not necessarily a cheap video to deliver. But we also have three sponsors in this show that helps pay for those of you that are watching the video, it's still a little bit of a loss leader for me due to the fact that we're, you know, we're still working the price down. And I actually, I pay a lot less than 15 cents because of my volume. But let me tell you, the, you know, the, the, the AT&Ts of the world and the Verizons of the world, you know, it's, it's just pure profit. It's pure on trade. I wish I had that kind of a business where I could have a thousand 5,000, 10,000% markup on a product. You know, every, any businessman dreams to have that kind of a markup on a product. And uh, for AT&T to raise this price to make one plan is criminal. It's simply criminal 
and they are the scourge of the earth. And uh, I'm sure this will follow. I'm sure Verizon and everyone else will follow right along behind and uh, and play. So don't update your data plan with AT and T if you've got a current uh, if you've got a current plan that's uh, cheaper than that. Scoble's got a good uh, write up about Google Plus, and I've been playing around with Google Plus. Matter of fact, tonight before the show. I usually do it uh, four or five hours before, but tonight I did it about an hour before. I said, hey, anybody got any good tech tips? And I got a couple. We'll cover those at the end of the show. But uh, Scoble's in deep. You know, he, get, he gets into the latest thing anytime he falls in love with it and spends a two, three, four, five months in it. Then he moves on to the next thing. And, of course, you know, Scoble's, uh, you know, he's an early adopter. But he says, for the past week, six weeks, I've been totally engrossed in Google+. Plus." Addicted is the right word. It's like dinosaurs that fell into a t- part. Uh, excuse me. It's like those dinosaurs that fell into a pit of tar and k- couldn't get out. Heck, I'm not the only one. He says today, blogger Lewis Gray announced he was joining Google to work on Google Plus. Basically, Lewis is going to become their their advocate. But he goes in here, and uh, of course, he only has 114,000 followers, and he's got a usage pattern. He talks about that, but he's talking about stuff that he's learned about and some audio interviews and stuff about South by Southwest, some Ted stuff, um, and just basically a lot of videos, a lot of photos, and all these different items that he says I'm getting great traction on, I'm getting great comments. Um, this is, you know, better than, you know, like he says, he's, he's addicted to it. But I think it's an interesting write-up, and it shows how a person can expand their social network and work effectively um, in Google+. And I'll say this much. They introduced games, and the biggest worry I had was I was going to start seeing a bunch of idiotic game announcements. Hey, come join my game. Come play a game with me. Hey, you're, you're not farming with me. You're not fishing. You're not, uh, you know, what all these other wait, what I <laughs> consider a waste of time in a brain suck would be, you know, seeing all this topical content. Instead, I'm getting all this great commentary. I have everything broke down. It's kind of cool. I've got everybody in their own little circle. I got the business circle. I got the venture capitalist circle. I've got friends. I got acquaintances. I've got fans. And it's really kind of hard to figure out all the all the real good fans of the show. I know and I pull them in and I can follow them. But it's the folks who don't send email too often that I really have a hard time kind of classifying. So I've got this big list that's a following list. And I can go in, I think I've got 14 or 15 circles, and I can look at each category. And I can go down through and I can kind of see maybe a half day's worth of commentary of what everyone's been talking about. And lots of great interactive stuff. I can quickly plus one stuff. I can leave a comment, boom, 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 boom. I'm in and I'm out. Now, scoble has been living in it. And there was uh, last week during Saturday Morning Tech, there's you know, all kinds of people talking about using strategies of jumping in hangouts with celebrities and with famous people and be able to talk to them. I don't have time to sit here and kind of watch the stream for that kind of stuff. But um, if you really want to connect with people and network, uh, there is great opportunity within Google Plus because you can follow anybody. And they're not necessarily going to follow you back, but you can watch what they have to say. And I like that better than anything Twitter or Facebook has been. Facebook is a totally different vibe, and uh, I think you enjoy what Scoble has to say. So we've talked about this several times on the show, but i just kind of give you guys my little uh, one-two on this. And, of course, if you want to follow me on Google+, the link to my profile will be in the show notes. Okay, let's talk a little bit about copyright infringement. Uh, Newark Yankee says it's insulting to call us the evil empire, but it's also trademark infringement. Apparently... Uh, A couple have started selling anti-Yankee gear, mainly to Red Sox fans, using the term Evil Empire. The Yankees are uh, suggesting that uh, this uh, company is infringing on their trademarks. Of course, you know, they're altering like the New York Times logo. You know, they're doing some stuff that, uh, you know, is a little bit borderline. But they're going to go to court and they're going to say this is a parody. We're making fun of the Yankees. This should not be considered uh, trademark infringement. There were no way diminishing their brand and so forth. So see where this goes. But uh, Yankees is trying to hush 
someone that is uh, creating uh, basically T-shirts and so forth that uh, that bash them. Now, if you're not a New York Yankees fan and you might be a um, a Red Sox fan or so forth, uh, you'll definitely uh, want to be able to check out uh, just uh, Google Evil Empire clothes or something like that. You'll find the uh, Evil Empire wear. Something like you'll find the, I'll have the link up in the show notes here. You guys can check it out. All right, over on Tech Dirt. You remember here last week that this uh, young individual, the Tampa police, arresting a teenager for allegedly plotting to blow up his high school? Well, this popped up in his Facebook stream the day before the raid. He says, the weirdest thing happened today. Uh, he says, when my home homie, Nick Pizzi, was trying to connect to a wireless network, the connection list came up, and one of them was called FBI surveillance van. He said it was weird as beep. And uh, so apparently the FBI surveillance van with its Wi-Fi wireless network was up and broadcasting in the neighborhood. <laughs> and the kid that they were getting ready to to uh, to arrest turns out he, uh, you know, he saw the SSID. <laughs> This cannot be a coincidence. How stupid. <laughs> now, if you are if you are a hacker, <laughs> if you are doing something illegal, if you're doing something with your computer, if you're doing anything and all of a sudden if you are a criminal and all of a sudden on your phone you see FBI surveillance van you know, you'd be the guy that would be uh, uh, breaking up hard drives, shredding paper, um, you know. <laughs> um, you know, I just can't believe that they would be that stupid. But who knows? <laughs> um, I just, uh, that's funny. It really, really is. You know, and it, it's, what's funny is he's, he's not even, here's what he says too. You know, here's, he's getting, just getting ready to get arrested. He says, the police are one thing. The FBI is another. I ain't messing with no FBI agents. L-M-A-O. And little did he know, it's his door was about ready to get kicked in and he was the one that was going to be put in cuffs. So watch out for that FBI surveillance van in your neighborhood. The SSID tag. Now, I'm not going to get into the S&P thing and why they downgraded our debt. That's already been uh, talked by every talking head in the country. But here's a little tidbit. It appears that the Justice Department is investigating the S&P just after it downgrades the U.S. credit rating. <laughs> Related? Hmm. I don't know. Could be. Oh, boy. Wow. Hey, that's gonna you know you mess with the you mess with Uncle Sam. <laughs> he says, "Okay, you're gonna downgrade my credit rating. Yeah, I'll show you. Let me go ahead and uh, sick the Justice Department on you and run you out of the country." Um, they all got rich. Don't worry. Every one of those hedge hedge funders and everything else, they got rich. They're still getting rich on us. Look at the stock market today. Uh, it's only just us, you know, us paupers here that are, you know, we're we're the only ones that are. Um, you know, getting impacted. You know, we don't know how to work the system. Uh, if you bought gold, congratulations. <laughs> it looks like it's about ready to bust 1850. How high can it go? Um, wow. Now, Apple has been trying to squeeze as much room as it can out of any device that it uh, builds. And apparently, Apple has submitted a patent that has cut the three and a half inch, in other words, I'm just, excuse me, the 3.5 millimeter, your little headphone, headphone jack, they want to shrink it by uh, by one half. And uh, they're trying to get every millimeter of room extra that they can. So expect to have to have a an adapter here in the near future on Apple devices to be able to plug into uh, the headset. Yeah, they're going to shrink that little plug to uh, to a smaller size. The Department of Homeland Security is trying to hide mobile scanners. We talked about this a long time ago. But uh, the Electronic Privacy Information Center, and this is an article over on Slashdot, filed a Freedom of Information Act request last year 
with Department of Homeland Security, and uh, they had basically asked for details on the scanning technology used in public places like train stations and in even ordinary city streets. The TSA has been testing devices like the Z backscatter vans, pri both privately and, and on members of the general public. The, uh, the Electronic Privacy Information Center received new documents from the DHS. Some of the documents are almost completely black from redactions. In other words, Department of Homeland Security does not want us to know where it's hiding, hiding these things. But does it bother you that you could be going into an airport, a bus station, a subway, and they're scanning you with the backscatter radiation and you don't even know it? That bothers me just a little bit. It does. Um, so hopefully they get to the bottom of what's going on. Hey, remember that hypersonic vehicle that uh, DARPA lost? Well, DARPA's announced that its Falcon hypersonic vehicle experienced a flight anomaly into the vehicle's climb, and the vehicle took over, its, uh, and, and it uh, basically initiated an autonomous flight uh, system safety profile, and it did crash or, or glided, a controlled gliding into the water. <laughs> so they're still uh, trying to determine exactly what happened. We'll see. Lots of your taxpayer dollars. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Fish are swimming around it. AES is a security that's used for a huge number of devices, credit cards, and so forth. Um, researchers at Microsoft, and along with Dutch, uh, Dutch University, Laverne, have discovered a way to break the widely used AES encryption, but they say that it would take uh, millions of computers to do it in a very long time. So it doesn't sound like AES is going around anywhere soon, but there is just a little little notch in the armor on, on AES. I'm going to show you guys a video here. This is pretty cool. Um, it's going to be real quick, and there's no audio. Is there audio? Let me see. And then I don't have the dog on audio cable hooked up. Hang on. ill-prepared. Okay, i got to remember to do that. Let me go ahead and switch over here. Let me show you this. This is uh, NASA's first step towards, uh, yeah, that's the right one, first step towards uh, weather prediction. This is pretty short. It's only 30 seconds. And let's see if we can blow it up. And what this is is space weather. And uh, this is courtesy of NASA. So you see um, on the left, you see your near Earth. Uh, in the second section, you see inner heliosphere. In the next section, you see solar corona. And then in the, the blue, it's the lower corona. So this is pretty cool. This is the first time that they have been able to, to do this. And uh, this is uh, where NASA scientists can now track the effects of a solar, solar storm on Earth offering new advancements in the ability to predict space weather. This is being um, tracked by NASA's Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory uh, called Stereo. It's a spacecraft that's allowed researchers to observe the sun throwing off immense clouds of material. And uh, so now they're able to actually see it uh, hitting the Earth's atmosphere. Um, I got kids that are going to be off school tomorrow, and it sounds like mom and daughter were having a little doon doon in the background. <laughs> so... Uh, I hope all of a sudden the door doesn't bust open and I have to go do dad duty. They 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 know better. I have to go up there and have a chit chat with my young young lady who uh you know, I got I got a I got a fifteen year old going on twenty five here, folks. <laughs> uh yes, uh that's all I can say. NASA's also saying that uh aliens just may destroy us because of our gases. Um, save the Earth, save the Earth. But NASA's a NASA report, written by scientists at Penn State, part, were part of a NASA team, have basically said that they've offered three basic scenarios: beneficial, neutral, or totally bloody scary. Now this is kind of paraphrasing. <laughs> But they say that aliens may turn out to be highly cool dudes who only want to learn how to play croquet, make bread, uh, make baked, excuse me, yeah, make baked Alaska, what is that? 
and teach us how to zap political or social opponents with just a laser emerging from a fingernail. The second possibility is that they would they could find this to be a nuisance, a feeling that we may that we might reciprocate. The re, uh, the report basically says that they make maybe they may be merely creepily uh, like those uh, prawns in District Nine, or they might just want to uh, uh, bake Alaska and eat us for the crunchy texture of our ears. That might happen because aliens are mean spirited, or merely because they're slightly clumsy. Uh, but basically, said they may come and try to save us from destructing our planet from environmental issues. So, anyway, um, kind of an interesting high position by the folks at NASA. What do you think? Do you think uh, they'll come here and just eat us? Do you think they'll come here and uh, uh, give us technology? Do you think they'll uh, just uh, remove us from the planet and allow it to uh, recycle? What do you guys think? Uh, what's the chances? Uh, quite honestly, I, I don't want to find out. <laughs> and if I they do come, I hope they're bringing technology and not the other two scenarios. Um, kind of an interesting thing to think about, though, yeah? I'm not going to dwell on it too long. I'll let you guys do that. Okay. Uh, LTE equipment showing up in Apple stores. Hmm. I wonder why. Well, apparently, there's... Uh, there's some sort of uh, stuff going on. LTE equipment. Oh, how, what could that be? The equipment question said to board 700 megahertz and AWS bands. So we know that uh, AT&T plans to use both of these for its LTE, LTE network. And if when it and, and when it is, and of course, if it acquires T-Mobile. But, uh, but we don't understand why they're going to be placed inside an Apple store. We didn't think that they were soon rolling out an LTE phone, or were they? So we'll see. But maybe the uh, maybe the iPhone is coming to uh, T-Mobile a little bit early. Could it be? Could it be? It'd make my wife very happy as long as T-Mobile stays with T-Mobile, not with AT&T. If you've got a Mac, Apple's released its first line update to fix uh, system hangs and flaky Wi-Fi. I installed both of them. Both of my machines are working good. I don't know what it really did, to be honest with you. Now imagine this, Microsoft is starting to talk about an app store for Windows 8. Well, if you can't beat them, join them, right? That's a good that's the normal adage. So uh with the uh, advent of the app store for Apple, I'm sure Microsoft had, hmm, maybe we should have one of those. So they've got a team that's actually working on an app store, so we'll keep you abreast of that. Those of you that are on Verizon, hey, 23.3% of you have made the switch to the iPhone versus another device. So there is a shift. Um, the current, oh, actually, excuse me, the breakdown is 76.7% of you are using AT&T. The other 23.3% are using Verizon. They actually, I apologize, they did not, um, I gave you the wrong gouge there. They, they did not say that 23.3% of Verizon customers were using iPhone. Only the number of iPhones was 23.3%. And uh, this was, came from a study that was released August of 2011. It was over on arstetica.com. I have the link up in the show notes. You know, the uh, music folks have been fighting against uh, YouTube for a while. Oh, let's talk. I want to share with you guys something from YouTube. You guys know I, I uh, basically applied to be a partner <laughs> or whatever a preferred client or whatever their BS is that they allow you to make your uh, YouTube channel all pretty. I was denied. So uh, I guess I'm not loved at YouTube. Uh, and no one watches my stuff on YouTube. I don't promote it. Um, you know, I really, I think the most video views one of my pieces has is like 23,000. That's the top. And then the rest of them are in like the 100 range. So of course they're not going to approve me. Why would, why would they if I'm not driving traffic? But they say, we can't approve your request at this time. You have to work on your YouTube channel. No, I don't think so. All right, music publishers go AWOL in the war against YouTube. The National, Mus the National Music Publishers Association has decided to drop out of a broad coalition copyright of copyright owners that has been doing with battles with YouTube since 2007. Apparently, the National Music Publishers Association somehow settled with Google, but Google said that they didn't give anything up as part of the settlement. Hmm. So it must be they didn't get anything. I don't know. The NPWA waved the white flag in a Wednesday press release. 
Music publishers will have the opportunity to enter into a license agreement with YouTube and receive royalties from YouTube for musical works and videos posted on the site, the group says. Well, that's good for the composers. Now, the, the NPA basically represents those, the folks that actually write the music, not the ones that actually perform it. One thing my wife turned me on to is we, uh, she's basically told me, cancel the Netflix CD delivery. She says, I want to go streaming only. She says, the kids aren't getting the CDs back in the, or the DVDs back in the mail quick enough. The stuff that's been in the queue has been crap. And it's, we have like two weeks in a row of stuff just being delivered. And I was like, I didn't look at the queue and it was junk. So she's upset. She says, why do I need to do that when I can go on my iPad and pre-request videos on a red box? And I just go over there, and for you know, for two dollars, I get uh, I get the video. She says, I just you know put them in, and it's it tells me which red box it's at, and I go to it and get the videos out, and they're they're reserved. And so I can't, really can't argue that. Um, but one of the things she did was she got free rental coupons. So before it's only gonna be this isn't gonna last long. But if you didn't know you could reserve videos on a red box with your iPad app, go download, get, go do that. You can browse the online uh, online catalog before hitting the supermarket and uh, basically uh, make sure that you get the video you've been wanting. All right. So I don't know if they charge you more for that or not. I don't know if it's an actual app or you just go to the website, but uh, I think they asked for your zip code. If there's not an app, there will be. But, you know, she was doing it in the car while we were driving, so it worked out well. Uh, anyway, that's that on that. All right, let's go ahead and talk about Netgear's prepping another media streaming box. I don't know how many of these they're going to do. Uh, of course, with their little uh, things didn't go too good, I guess, with Roku. But they're getting ready to launch another box. It looks like another hockey puck. It's called Neo TV. Don't know what's going to be on it or any more details, no prices, and... A rundown of the available apps, but uh, I'll be definitely turning my team onto that, see if we can get some uh, channels over there as well. Good article on Torrent Frink talks about Mafia Fire, you know, when the DOJ uh, pulled down all those websites um, earlier this year. They had, uh, we talked about this new plugin for uh, a variety of browsers, but uh, they've added to this browser, adding a whole bunch of features. Um, Uncle Sam does not like this particular plugin, um, but uh, they've added some pretty cool features to it. So Mafia Fire is one you want to look for if you want to play around with that a little bit. uTorrent has announced 100 million monthly users. So the economy is uh, not, uh, no one's being affected by the economy and no one is doing any additional peer-to-peer -peer stuff at all, right? 100 million monthly users. Wow, that just tells you how much stuff's being uh, shared on a peer-to-peer -peer network. Large ISPs are supposedly profiting from BitTorrent traffic. Well, what's going on is that it appears that a lot of the peer-to-peer uh, -peer traffic stays within a local area. So those, you know, how it works is you're kind of sucking off people, um, other people's, you're seeding when you're doing peer-to-peer. -peer. So it turns out the way the peer-to-peer -peer stuff works, it really kind of tries to stay centralized and looks at passively the paths of least resistance. And what it's turning out is that the smaller ISPs who don't have such a bigger base, they're the ones that are actually being hurt the most from peer-to-peer, -peer, where the large ISPs are not. They're actually potentially making some money with peering arrangements and so forth. And they did a two-year study where they tracked downloads of over 500,000 people for 169 different countries. And the report's pretty amazing. Um, in the amount of, number, first of all, number of traffic being used, and two, um, basically the follow the money, and uh, some of the bigger ISPs is probably one of their dirty little secrets that they're probably making money from the peer-to-peer -peer traffic. All right. Um, moving on here. Do you guys know what Control F is? Try it on your browser right now if you're watching a computer. No, your computer is not going to blow up. But do you know that's a quick way to find something? Um, I use Control F a lot, but apparently uh, there is a huge number of people that like 90% of people don't know what Control F is. 
and uh, it really works good. I don't think I think it works in every browser as well. So uh, when you need to find something on a website, which I do all the time, use Control F. All right, here's product of the day. This is from ogizmo.com. The Energizer Eye Surge Travel Charging Station. Awesome. When you guys see this, you're going to want one. 60 bucks. They're going to be available in October. They're not cheap, but I'm going to tell you, this is, uh, I can't wait for this thing. I'm always looking for compact stuff to provide me more ports, more places to plug stuff in, charge it, not have to carry so many chargers. This is it. So uh, the Energizer Eye Surge will be available in October. Cannot wait. And uh, there's an outlet on the underside as well. So plenty of places to plug in. Usually hotels have that, but you're not always at a hotel when you need to be charging stuff. All right. Those of you that are complaining about not being able to watch Fox videos, in other words, content from Fox online because uh, they've locked it down, Fox has basically told telling people to go out and complain to your providers. Here's my suggestion. Do not do it. Do not complain. Just don't watch the content, okay? So, but they're saying, hey, if you're frustrated, here's a little page for you to fill information out so we can send a complaint. And basically says, dear provider, I want to continue watching full episodes on Fox.com, but you're not one of the participating providers. As a customer of as a customer of provider, I want you to know that I expect to have access to these episodes included in my subscription. Hmm. I wouldn't complain about it. We need to, you know, if they're going to put this stuff behind firewalls and make it hard to see, and you're going to have to be a subscriber to cable TV, which I'm not anymore. Thank goodness. Um, boy, it's been beautiful getting that extra hundred bucks back every month. I just see it in my checking account. <laughs> Woohoo! But anyway, um, oh well, is what I say at this point. My kids are complaining about it a little bit, but uh, you know what? It was like when my dad throwing out when the TV blew up and didn't buy one for three years. It's not really making that big of an impact. If you are a video producer, you may want to check out Vidly. It's a group that's working doing video encoding and helping to distribute videos in multiple formats. It is not cheap. It is very, very expensive. It's part of the encoding.com's offering. They they are just charging ridiculous prices. To do one of my videos, to distribute the amount of traffic that I moved, they said like $680 for one video. And I said, hey, whatever. You guys have lost your minds. Um, anyway, link will be up in, that in the show notes. Apparently, those of you that have been uh, watching uh, the difference between Amazon and Netflix, apparently Amazon's got a lot of videos, but they don't have a lot of anything. And uh, so people are saying that even though Netflix increased the price and uh, you know changed everything up, that uh, the Netflix offerings are, are pretty good uh, compared to everything else. Hey, I want to share with you guys just a little piece of business here before we get into the last segment of the show before we wrap up tonight. You guys know that I've been using GoToMeeting and I've been using their new feature, HD Faces. I've been just completely jazzed about this. You know, GoToMeeting by Citrix is really the way I meet online with colleagues. I basically did that all day today. That You know, they've just added the high-definition group video conferencing feature. And again, it's called GoToMeeting with HD Faces. And you can collaborate with anyone around the world face-to-face. As a matter of fact, I've kind of surprised people a few times because I come up in it and I'm up, but they don't, maybe don't have a webcam. They're like, oh, I can see you. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. You got a webcam. No, I said, that's okay. You can see me. It's, oh, I like that. That's awesome. So um, facial expressions can express so much. It's so much more than words. Those of you who listen to me can't see me being all animated. And video quality is, man, it's better than Google Hangout. And it is definitely the highest resolution in the industry. Nothing compares. And, uh, again, I've been using it on a daily basis here, and everyone I've seen has been blown away. So go to meeting with HD Faces will make your online meetings even more personal, engaging, and effective. Plus, it's so easy to use. All you need is an Internet connection, a webcam, and plus, saves you a lot of money. With this economy kind of in the titter-totter mode right now, I don't know which way we're going to go, if we're going to go recession or if we're going to climb out. This is a good time to hold on to your cash and use your resources wisely. So I want you to try... Go to meeting with HD Faces. It's going to simply change 
the way you work. Geek News Central listeners can get a free 30-day trial by going to gotomeeting.com. Click on the Try It Free button, okay? Go over to gotomeeting.com. Click on the uh, Try It Free button. And where is my little pop-up? Down there it is. All right, so come over here and use the promo code podcast. Again, visit gotomeeting.com. Click the Try It Free button and use the promo code podcast and uh, get that free 30-day trial. Thanks for GoToMeeting for being a sponsor here. And we hope that you guys will give this thing a try and uh, let me know how you use it. And then just, just use your webcam and then just try it with that alone, if nothing else. I think you'll be shocked. All right. Um, going on a vacation? Well, ask a nomad. This is a pretty cool service. I have the link up in the show notes. You can ask questions about the world, locations you're going, restaurants, and so forth. You can find about local spots, get suggestions. Great way to get info. If you are using peer-to-peer, the fakes, folks over at makeuseof.com have five tips to prevent watching downloading of torrents. In other words, watch basically some ways to kind of keep yourself from being tracked <laughs> and a way to encrypt your torrent data and talking about what not to download and talking about using a seed box and a variety of different things. So be careful out there. But a little tip line there for you over at makeuseof.com. Of course, I remind you of the new edition of the Gadget Professor. He covered gyration, air mouse, and keyboard. What else did he have in his uh, show today? Um, I think you're going to love the Gadget Professor if you haven't watched the video. A, uh, Don's running on a TriCaster just like I am. He's using a virtual set. He's zooming in in his virtual set. You'll be able to see the stuff. Uh, very cool, very highly produced. So definitely check out the Gadget Professor new editions at uh, Geek Central right now. Go get it. If you got a cool million dollars, five days in space, hotel available. Boarding the Soyuz rocket, seven hotel patrons will be asked to fork over a million dollars for for the flight. Excuse me, five hundred thousand for the flight, hundred thousand for a five night stay, and uh, basically, Russian company Orbital Tra- Technologies is announcing a plan to construct a commercial space station by 26, 2016, offering guests an unforgettable vacation and a heck of a view of Earth. But uh, a million bucks. Oh, can raise a million dollars. I would pay for that. If I had a million bucks, I'd pay for that in a heartbeat. In a New York minute. Could you guys, would you guys do that? Would you guys spend your life savings to go to the international, to the, to a, to a, uh, a commercial space station for five days? Wow, I can't uh, I can't think how many of us wouldn't. It's just money, right? <laughs> just got to get that built up, right? Enough to have to go. HD Home Run, this is pretty cool. If you're looking a way to distribute HD video around your house for $249, you can patch HD video to all your computers, basically watch things uh, um, from your television through your PC. All you need is a cable card, and then basically you'll be able to watch all the channels you haven't been able to on your PCs and different devices. This is pretty cool. There's another company that's come out with one, too. It's called Infini TV, and uh, so they've got a, a couple of devices there to look at. This is an article over on Engadget. I'll have that link up in the show notes for you to check out. But a uh, cool, cool way to use your network in your home to patch HD around. For those of you that are Evernote users, they've acquired Skitch. And they have released a Skitch app for the Android. So that's available for you. Russians had a little bit uh, of trouble with a satellite that they launched. A European-built Russian communication satellite did not make it into its uh, final orbit. The upper stage malfunctioned. So they're basically stuck with a 5,700-kilogram lead weight that is in an absolute wrong orbit. So... um, they are going to uh, have to see what happens here, but it did not get into its geosynchronous location. So another another satellite did not make it to uh, to orbit. Foursquare has added events to location check-ins. So if you're going to an event, you definitely want to check in on Foursquare. I was telling, telling a guy about Foursquare the other day, and he didn't even know about it. I said, you got to get your business list on Foursquare. Matter of fact, let's you know, so I kind of show it to him. I says, you know, you gotta you gotta get your uh, web presence updated so we can. More people can find you, and 
he was telling me about his hits he was getting each month, and he's got a great business, but he just is not web savvy. Do you have any friends like that? They have businesses but are not web savvy. We got as geeks, and if we're friends with them, we got to help them. And uh, so I'm kind of committed to giving him some time on, you know, basically gratis to uh, help him get his uh, location up, help him get up a blog going and so forth. But uh, just like this Foursquare thing and adding uh, events and local check-ins and so forth, got to have that all in there. Firefox Beta 7 is available. I thought they quit numbering stuff. I guess not, but Firefox Beta 7 is available. And uh, that's all I've got for regular content today. Let me go ahead and get into the email comments. And bounce over here. Let me look at the time. We're doing okay. Uh, let's see here. What is the date? What was uh, the last show was on the 15th? So we can go down here. And I think this one is... Got an email here from Ron. He says, in case you haven't seen this 13-minute video, apparently in 1994, they almost built a tablet to display newspapers. So this is an article that was over on Mashable. Boy, I should have took that banner down, huh? You guys getting all kinds of free advertising. Um, so I have that link up in the show notes. Ron, thanks for that. Got an email here from uh, from Bruce. Hey, Todd, I kind of support both arguments for and against the show format. On the one hand, I like the familiarity and banter, but on the other hand, only have a finite amount of time to consume the show. I mean, listen to audio show and like a listener from last week. Use times two on iPhone to listen in half a time. It does take some getting used to, but allows me to digest my regular content before it gets stale. Keep up the good work. Let us know what your plank when your planks are for sale. Regards, Bruce in the UK. Uh, he says apologies for the brevity and pagination of this message sent from a mobile device. Did pretty good there, Bruce. And uh, one thing you know, I the um, about the show length. I feel much comfortable with uh, just going as is. So. Uh, um, so far, not too much fallout, uh, and it's, I'm just going to continue to go in as is. Hey, again, thanks, Jim, for pointing me towards the Million Dollar Vacation Home in Space. Thanks for that. Got an email here from Glenn. He says, uh, hey, Todd, you were speaking a few uh, shows ago about Gmail and having a common username. Way back in the mid to, in mid-2004 when Gmail was very new, I did not know anyone who had an invite to give out, but I did want to reserve an address just in case Gmail really took off. So I did. So what I did was go to eBay and purchase an invite. I didn't even know we could sell those then. It worked great. I was just I was able to pick up the exact address I wanted. It was just the first character of my first name plus my last name. Very simple. I sat on it, not using it for about four years. Finally, I did start using it. Nowadays, I get about two messages a month for other people. As you might guess, the intended person also has a first name that starts with a G and my last name. Still, overall, it's been great to have an easy-to-remember email address to give out. Thanks for the great show. Keep up the great work. And kind of funny, I did get an email from another Cochran. Uh, this one came, uh, and he, it was a guy that has not done it before, but I met another Tim, Tim Cochran out there. Tim, hello, and I hope you're listening to the show now. Had a nice email chat with you. But uh, he was sending himself a link from an article over on Mashable, and I, 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 I kind of I uh, tease him. I said, well, you can come over and send yourself links from uh, my site, is my site too. But uh, hopefully we picked up a new listener. Right? And I told him, hey, you spelled, uh, you spelled the copper in the, the right way with an E on the end. He says, well, he says it was a mistake because the rest of the family on his side spells it without. So um, it's still correct with an E. All right, everybody, thanks for hanging out here, of course, with me today. And I hope you guys had fun with the show. And, of course, if you want to follow me on Twitter, at Geek News. Of course, the email address is geeknews at gmail.com. The hotline is 619-342-7365. You can follow us on facebook.com forward slash geeknews. We want to thank our sponsors, GoDaddy, Carbonite, and, of course, the folks over at GoToMeeting. It's been a great show. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it as much as I did putting it together. And we'll see you on Saturday for Saturday Morning Tech, where I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun. Hopefully not as much fun as we had last Saturday. <laughs> I shouldn't say like that. It was fun, but it was a little bit odd. Anyway, um, if you haven't saw last week's Saturday Morning Tech, it's worth the watch. It's a long show. You thought this one was long. That one was really long. But uh, until then, everyone take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching or listening to as well. Aloha.